این به نظر من خیلی مهمه که ما امروز چجوری و چطوری با خود یعنی یک آماده سازی یک بستر سازی برای اینکه در مراحل بعدی و تو این فیلم هست که چینیا ها ضربه خوردن بله. کشورهای دیگه ای ضربه خوردن از این فروپاشی از این بانک ها که فرو ریخت و بعد ایران چه تأثیری ممکن بله. بگیره و بعد خب ما برنامه خودمون باید داشته باشیم تمام بحث امشب این بله. که ما با چگونه خودمون آماده بعض آینده بکنیم بس بر سر اینه که توی آمریکا که آمدن خونه ساختن بله. ما الان داریم مسکن مهر رو ایجاد میکنیم میدیم دست بله. مردم توی آمریکا که زمین رو کت کردن بله. توی کاداسترشون در واقع لند پارسل رو و قطع قطع کردن زمین و سند کردن رو که انجام دادن چرا آمریکا به اینجا رسیده من بحثم سر اینه من بحثم اینه که گیرم که ما هم کاداس رو نهایی کردیم گیرم که این اتفاقات در جمهوری اسلامی هم افتاد مسکن مردم رو هم قطع کردیم ما بلایی که سر آمریکا آمده رو باید ببینیم عبرت بگیریم چرا خانه وجود دارد ولی مردم از خونه بیرون رانده میشن میرن توی چادر زندگی میکنن ولی خونه ها خالی میمونه By the time George W. Bush took office in 2001, the U.S. financial sector was vastly more profitable, concentrated, and powerful than ever before. Dominating this industry were five investment banks, two financial conglomerates, three securities insurance companies, and three rating agencies. And linking them all together was the securitization food chain. A new system, which connected trillions of dollars in mortgages and other loans with investors all over the world. 30 years ago, if you went to get a loan for a home, the person lending you the money expected you to pay him or her back. You got a loan from a lender who wanted you to pay him back. We've since developed securitization, whereby the people who make the loan are no longer at risk if there's a failure to repay. In the old system, when a homeowner paid their mortgage every month, the money went to their local lender. And since mortgages took decades to repay, lenders were careful. In the new system, lenders sold the mortgages to investment banks. The investment banks combined thousands of mortgages and other loans, including car loans, student loans, and credit card debt, to create complex derivatives called collateralized debt obligations, or CDOs. The investment banks then sold the CDOs to investors. Now when homeowners paid their mortgages, the money went to investors all over the world. The investment banks paid rating agencies to evaluate the CDOs, and many of them were given a triple A rating, which is the highest possible investment grade. This made CDOs popular with retirement funds, which could only purchase highly rated securities. This system was a ticking time bomb. Lenders didn't care anymore about whether a borrower could repay, so they started making riskier loans. The investment banks didn't care either. The more CDOs they sold, the higher their profits. And the rating agencies, which were paid by the investment banks, had no liability if their ratings of CDOs proved wrong. You weren't going to be on the hook, and there weren't regulatory constraints. Um, so it was a green light to just pump out more and more and more loans. Between 2000 and 2003, the number of mortgage loans made each year nearly quadrupled. Everybody in this uh, securitization food chain from the very beginning until the end, they didn't care about the quality of the mortgage. They were caring about maximizing the volume and getting a fee out of it. In the early 2000s, there was a huge increase in the riskiest loans called subprime. But when thousands of subprime loans were combined to create CDOs, many of them still received AAA ratings. Now, it would have been possible to create derivative products that don't have these risks, mm -hmm. that carry the equivalent of deductibles, where there are limits on the risks that can be taken on and so forth. They didn't do that, did they? They didn't do that, and in retrospect, they should have done. So did these guys know that they were doing something dangerous? I think they did.
All the incentives that the financial institutions offered to their mortgage brokers were based on selling the most profitable products, which were predatory loans. The banker makes more money if they put you in a subprime loan. That's where they're gonna, that's where they're gonna put you. Suddenly, hundreds of billions of dollars a year were flowing through the securitization chain. Since anyone could get a mortgage, home purchases and housing prices skyrocketed. The result was the biggest financial bubble in history. Real estate is real. They can see their asset. They can live in their asset. They can rent out their asset. You had a huge boom in housing that made no sense at all. The financing appetites of the financial sector drove what everybody else did. Last time we had a housing bubble was in the late 80s. In that case, the increase in home prices had been relatively minor. That housing bubble led to a relatively severe recession. From 1996 until 2006, real home prices effectively doubled. and $500 a ticket. They've come to hear how to buy their very own piece of the American dream. Goldman Sachs, Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, Merrill Lynch were all in on this. The uh, sub subprime lending alone increased from $30 billion a year in funding to over $600 billion a year in 10 years. They knew what was happening. Countrywide Financial, the largest subprime lender, issued $97 billion worth of loans. It made over $11 billion in profits as a result. On Wall Street, annual cash bonuses spiked. Traders and CEOs became enormously wealthy during the bubble. Lehman Brothers was a top underwriter of subprime lending, and their CEO, Richard Fold, took home $485 million. On Wall Street, to these housing and credit bubble was leading uh, to hundreds of billions of dollars of profits. You know, by 2006, about 40% of all profits of S&P 500 firms was coming from financial institutions. It wasn't real profits, it wasn't real income, it was just money that was being created by the system and booked as income two, three years down the road. There's a default, it's all wiped out. I think it was, in fact, in retrospect, a great big national and not just national global Ponzi scheme through the home ownership and equity protection act the federal reserve board had broad authority to regulate the mortgage industry but fed chairman alan greenspan refused to use it alan greenspan said no that's regulation ideologically i don't believe in it for 20 years robert ganizda was the head of greenlining a powerful consumer advocacy group he met with Greenspan on a regular basis. We gave him an example of countrywide and 150 different complex adjustable rate mortgages. He said, if you had a doctorate in math, you wouldn't be able to understand them enough to know which was good for you and which wasn't. So we thought he was going to take action. But as the conversation continued, it was clear he was stuck with his ideology. We met again with Greenspan in 05. Often we met with him twice a year, and never less than once a year. And he wouldn't change his mind. In this amazing world of instant global communications, the free and efficient movement of capital is helping to create the greatest prosperity in human history. Hundred forty-six people were cut from the enforcement division of the SEC. Is that what you also testified to? Yes. Yeah, I, I think there has been a, a, a systematic gutting, or whatever you want to call it, of the agency and its capability through cutting back a staff. The SEC Office of uh, Risk Management was reduced to a staff. Did you say of one? Yeah, when that gentleman would go home at night, he could turn the lights out. 